My name is Pastor Hal York, and we'd like to welcome you back to Truth in the Trenches. We've been off for a couple of months, and we're glad you're back, and we trust you'll be blessed as you now listen to these the devotions, short devotionals over the next uh, few months, and uh, looking forward to getting back into the book of Proverbs. If you've ever taken a hiking course or a hunting course, one of the things they remind you of and tell you what you need to take with you, one of the key things you have to take with you uh, is a compass. As you know, if you go hiking in the woods or hunting in the woods, it's Unless you're walking down a, a path, it's very easy to get disoriented because uh, all you can see is trees and you know, all trees all look the same. And uh, sometimes we can just get confused as to where we are and how to get back to where we were at the beginning. And so they tell you, as you're going to use your compass, it's not much use to use it when you're lost. You have to use it at the beginning. So when you do get confused, you can take it out and it can help you get reoriented again. And the whole compass is, well, I'm not going to get into all how a compass works, but but the most important thing about a compass, obviously, is one that under, always points in the same direction, north, a needle that always points north. If it points south and east every other time, then it's not much good. So a compass must have a fixed setting of the needle always points to north, or true north. And from there, we begin to get our bearings and where we want to go and so on. What is the fixed north in the Christian life? What is a true north in the Christian life? What do we, what things in life, in our life never change? What orients, what orients, what is our life oriented around? Well, I think Proverbs tells us what it should be. And it says in Proverbs 1, 7, a verse we've looked at many times, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is an awe, a reverence, a love, a devotion to God, the character of God, the majesty and the goodness and the holiness and the grace and the mercy of God. It's a conviction regarding the truth of the Word of God and a commitment to obedience to that Word. All of that is contained in that phrase, the fear of the Lord. That is the fixed arrow of our heart. That is what our heart is aimed at. That is what our heart always points to. And, and when we do that, that's what sets the uh, orientation and the markers in our life to live a godly life. It's very easy to get disoriented in the wilderness. And it's very easy to get disoriented living in this vast wilderness that we call the world. It's anti-Christian. It's anti-God. And there are very few markers in this world that guide us towards godliness and righteousness. And so we need to have our hearts fixed upon something that does not change. Nothing in this world, everything is changing. And nothing in this world is going to guide us in the, in the direction we need to go. So our heart needs to be anchored in the fear of God a love for him and a reverence for him. And that's the beginning of living wisely. That's the beginning of making right choices and good choices. Uh, as we think about our lives, as we at our work, in our home, there are many, many decisions we have to make in those places. What guides those decisions? What is the desire of our heart above all things? What do we think about more than anything else in our life? Is it God? Is it honoring him? Is it glorifying him in our choices and our decisions? As we make a decision, do we think about, is this honoring to God, glorifying to God? The fear of the Lord. Fear is what masters us, what controls us. It can be a good thing or a debilitating thing, but fear ultimately is the thing that we think about before we make any decision. For some, it's being, the fear of being rejected. For some, it's the fear of we may not get rich, we may not be successful, we may, not, we may be alienated from our families or whatever. But what is the guiding principle of your life? That's what we're talking about here. The guiding principle of the life of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And that's what we need to be. The fear of the Lord obviously refers to God himself and also the word of God. And the, David says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What's the true north in your life? What does the needle always point to? That's what's going to help us orient our lives in the right direction. It does orient our lives. For some, it's the wrong things, and therefore our life gets off track. But the Proverbs says in verse 813, the fear of the Lord is the hatred of evil, the pride and arrogance in the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. It says, the fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be short in 1027. 1427, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. Proverbs 1923, the fear of the Lord leads to life, and whoever has it rests satisfied. He will not be visited by harm. What's the guiding principle in your life? What controls you? The fear of the Lord is good and necessary. It's life-changing. It's life-guiding. It comes to play in our choices and our actions when we go to work, when we come home. 
the kind of people we're going to be, the kind of choices we're going to be, the kind of people we hang out with. Sinners may entice us, it says in verse 10, but the fear of, by the fear of the Lord, one turns away from evil. The fear of the Lord leads to, sat, to life, rest satisfied, keeps us from the snares of life and the lies of Satan in this world system. This world is not our friend as believers. We need to remember that. Proverbs says to guard our heart for out of it are the issues of life in chapter 4. So what is your heart saying? What is your heart pointed at? What does your heart fear? Do you fear dishonoring God more than you fear dis disappointing your friends? What is our fear? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Psalm 19.9 says, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Psalm 111, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. So a very simple truth. I think we need to remind ourselves often. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, of knowledge. Of... Every morning we need to get up and orient our, orient our heart to the the fear of God. Take our, our Bible and begin to read it and orient our heart and say, Lord, I want to honor and glorify you more than I want anything else. I want the fear of the Lord to be my guide and to help me to live a life that is wise and honoring to you in this vast wilderness. I want you to be my guide. I want you to be my strength and I want you to be glorified in my life. So may this truth guide us and guard us in the trenches of life as we seek to live our lives for the glory of God and the good of others. May God bless.